Thank you so much. My name is Mutoni Wase Claudin, and um, a number of things, but um, I'm too much into digital marketing, and I work with Elegant Brands Uganda as their secretary. Yeah, but besides that, I'm, I'm also a mental health advocate. Yeah, let's keep it at that and dive in, in today's presentation. And as my colleague mentioned, I assume today we are going to be more involved in everything. Use your chat, use your chat, write your comments, your questions. Yeah, let's learn together. So today I'm going to handle how to better position your product in the digital market. So let's dive in to the to the next slide and see what is a product, what is product or service positioning. Uh, product or service positioning is the process of defining where your product fits in the market and why it's the best solution for your customers. What does this mean? As you bring your service or your product at the market, the very first question you have to ask yourself is uh, why is this product or this service important? I'm imagining in one way or the other, there is a problem you realized in your community and you would love to solve it. That's how you come up with a product or that's how you come up with a service. There, if, if, it's, like, um, uh, if it's like a problem in your community, which you want to solve, it makes your product or your service relevant because it, it was something missing. Yeah, so um, try to define where the product fits in the market and why it's the best solution for your customers. It helps you manage customer perception and communicate how you want users to think and feel about your product. As I mentioned, just imagine you're in an area where the, there is issues of water. So when you decide to to bring a borehole, it will really make a lot of sense in the community or in the society. So that is the very same thing as well in the products. Even when you're going, even when you're taking your service or your product on the market, that is the digital market. The first question is, is it really important? Are people missing out on this? Or if there are other people or competitors who have the same product on the market, what am I going to change? Um, how am I going to make it easier for the consumers for them to be able to choose me? Yeah, your product positioning highlights your product's value and sets the context for understanding why customers should care. So it is best to take a user lead approach for positioning your product to create a solid image in your customer's mind. I usually mention to people who are who advertise online or who have their online businesses i'd be like put yourself into the consumers or the customers shoes will you be ordering things from 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 yourself if you were the customer how are you dealing with people even if it's online when they uh, when they write to you do you give them feedback there and then when they order stuff online do they receive exactly what they ordered and in how long, you know, how are you managing the frauds? All that is some of the very most important things you need to look through as you position your product or service online. Let's go to the next, to the next slide. Uh, why is product positioning integral to product performance? Literally, why is product positioning important? Or how is it, how does it um, contribute to the product performance? When you position yourself, is it going to change the customers, maybe the, the, the numbers? Because the most important thing we all look at is the income. So when, when you position your product or service, how does it affect its performance? How does the income um, and the money side change? One stand out in a competitive market. Strong product positioning is unique and it highlights the problems your product solves and why it's the best solution in the market. This differentiates your product from similar ones in the market and help customers make the right decision and purchase your product. It, um, 
when you position yourself in the right way, you stand out, even in a competitive market. So how do you stand out? It starts with everything, the name of your brand, the colors of your brand, up to down to your product. How is your product unique? How is it the best solution in the market? For example, if maybe you might be dealing with custom cosmetics or something. So the question is, how are your products really working? If if you're telling people that this product specifically removes scars, does it really do what you say, uh, what, what you're saying? Like um, what you're advertising to people, is that what it does? Because it's not just a matter of advertising, but you're giving out there maybe fake products or something. The next one, create a unique product image in the customer's mind. Positioning your product the right way influences how customers think and feel about it and ensures they understand its perfect solution to address their needs. Trust me, um, there is a research, uh, there was, um, it was like a documentary, I was watching it some time back, but they were explaining how these different ads we keep watching, um, maybe on YouTube or on your phone as you scroll here and there and the ads pops up, how they actually affect our decision making. You might realize that when you go to buy something, you end up buying this specific product always. And it's because of, uh, of the images you keep, you keep watching. In, in most cases, it is more with beverages. When we talk about soft drinks, trust me, you, the, the, the most thing which is going to come up in our mind is Coca-Cola because it's always all over the, the place. So as you, you position your product or your service, also target that it is a unique product and it is going to stay on the customer's mind. Um, the next one, put your brand front of mind. Good product positioning is not just about telling customers where your product is great. It's about making sure your product is the first thing they think of while thinking about your product category. That's what I was mentioning. What do you think when someone says soft drink? All you think about is Coca-Cola. There are different things. Um, when we talk about toothpaste, in most cases, what comes in our minds is Colgate. At the extent that uh, we think every toothpaste is Colgate. You can mention a number of things. You can mention petrol stations. This side in Uganda, literally Shell is a big deal that people end up calling every petrol station Shell. So you, you hear people say Shell of Total, yet these are two different uh, brands. So that's what it means when you, are, you have positioned yourself in the right place, in the right position. Another thing is um, ensure consistency in brand messaging. You can position your product as affordable through one marketing channel and premium through another. Customers will understand your brand and believe in it only when you are consistent with your messages across all channels, online, offline, word over mouth, everywhere. Um, oh, okay, I just read what Linda mentioned. Yeah, this side, uh, as I mentioned, all our toothpaste is Colgate. She has mentioned it is PEP. I can't read it properly. So as, as we move forward, as, um, so when we talk about consistency in brand messaging, it is to make sure the prices you are putting out there are the same everywhere, online, offline, um, not, 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 not saying maybe because you, you were advertising a TV ad, not saying on a TV ad that we have, we have reduced costs maybe at by 20%, but when people contact you to purchase, you'll be like, the prices are the same. No, it doesn't work that way. Consistency matters. Give out the same messages. And with this, I usually uh, mention when you are um, you are putting there out when you're putting out there your posts, let it be Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. In most cases, let them be uniform. 
don't post um if you're posting like today let it be uniform don't post something different to uh at the same time like right now you make a different post on facebook and you make another different post on instagram let them be uniform that's how you're going to to you know to cut the the customer's eye with a consistency and then they will have trust in you that what they see here is what they actually get what they see on facebook is what they're finding on instagram is what they're finding on twitter another thing is strong product positioning gives customers no doubt what your product is all about clear messaging also helps people within your business understand the brand identity and keep it in mind wherever they communicate about the product it is important even when you, um, it's a very big brand or company to have that one specific product what, uh, which people are going to address you with it is very 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 important however much you're dealing with a number of things get what, that one specific thing where when they talk about this that is what is going to come into people's mind that is so important um it can it can be maybe you're dealing with with shoes but there is that specific type of shoe which is going to sell you out so it's important to have at least one product which moves even if it moves higher than any other products but it puts you out there let's go to the next slide um and here we are talking about five yeah, we are going to the next slide. Yes, five strategies for positioning your product in the market. Five strategies for positioning your product in, in the market. The first one is the features and the characteristics. Every product team gets excited about introducing the next cool feature to customers. But customers don't care about, about the characteristics. They care about the benefits of the features and how they solve problems. When customers are buying, trust me, um, they do not care about, about what you have added. If, uh, if you have seen how how iPhones introduce the, the next iPhone. We really do not care a lot of things they have added, but they usually mention something. And actually that's what even the customers ask. How is the storage? Is the storage bigger? How is the camera? Is the camera fine? Uh, it, 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 is the camera better than the previous one? And that's all we want to know. So even when you're positioning and you're putting your product out there, it is very important to let the customers know that something we have added into this product is going to do this in a better way. And that's all they want to know. How is it going to make my life easier? How is this going to solve my problem? Even when you realize, um, when you see ads of cars, they'll be saying, maybe this moves faster. Uh, maybe the consumption of fuel is lower and that's all the clients wants to know. So even um, in our other, when you're advertising your product, make sure you mention that, that this product specifically is going to work on this. The second thing, product user. The product user strategy associates the product with a user or a spokesperson who represents, who represents that specific product. The target customers want to see themselves. This type of positioning is inspirational. Your customer wants to be the type of person who uses your product. That's why it's important to check your brand ambassador, the brand ambassador of your product and how she relates with the public. With, with the public. So um, this is what happens. Um, and here in Uganda, it is really very common. For a product, a specific product, um, before the brand or the company chooses uh, this person, this personality, this celebrity to be out there as the brand ambassador of the product, they want to see how this person is going to relate. For example, if this musician is a family person who, who talks about family, who, who is 
who always shares pictures of, of her family or his family all over the place, they're most likely to, to, to give him gigs of things to do with family. Maybe if you're a lady, it can be pampers, it can be milk for children. So you choose a person where the customers can easily see themselves in that brand ambassador. That's the easiest way to sell your product out there using celebrities, not getting a person who is, how should I mention it? Not getting a person who is totally off. For example, you get um, this celebrity who, who usually says they're not even ready to give birth. They, they doubt whether they will ever have kids. And before you know it, you're asking them to be a brand ambassador of Pampers. Like, are they going to advertise that? According to their lifestyle, they, they might be attracting people who have nothing to do with children. So then that is a wrong person. That's a wrong brand ambassador, even when she might be with a lot of following, but it can't work. Another thing, it is quality and pricing. Most customers want quality products in exchange for their hard-earned cash. So one strategy is to position your product as representing superior quality. What does this mean? They, there is a point where people do not care at all how much money this product is going to cost as long as it is good. And the question is, that, is it durable? And that's all. So they want the quality thing, even if the prices are high. You can see them with the luxury brands. It can happen for a number of reasons. Maybe because this person is, um, is a brand person who wants to associate themselves with those luxury, luxury brands like Prada, Gucci, or, or it, is, it is just a person who loves the quality. Alternatively, other brands position their products as affordable with less emphasis on quality, which is also okay because there are brands who have sold with only one intention. We are going to make our products cheaper so they'll be affordable, which necessarily does not mean they are durable. And still, when you have your target market, you can still make it. You can always get people who say, ah, but all I need, all I need is, is it cheap? I will deal with whether it's durable later. So you have to decide where you belong. Are you going to ensure your prices are high, but you're selling really quality? Or is it about selling numbers? Um, when I mentioned this, you, you can always compare with iPhone. Trust me, iPhone does not really over advertise, but the issue is not, how many people, uh, how many customers are we going to get? No, it's about the quality. So the prices are going to be high, very high, and then they're going to produce smaller numbers. But when you go to the other side of techno phones, it won't be about the quality. It is going to be about the quantity. We're going to make these phones affordable so that we sell a number of them. Yeah, I think that's the, the easiest example I can give. That, um, Dear, I have moved to the next one. Let's have the next slide. Number four, product, product use and application. Um, yes, product use and application. This might sound similar to the features and characteristic positioning methods, but here you'd focus on use rather than the, the, the benefits, making the product a popular choice for a well-defined use case. For example, a particular, um, okay, I won't read through the whole of this example, but here the main issue is how are you making the product a popular choice for the well-defined use case? As I mentioned, as a company, you might not be known for all your products, but you can always get that one product which you're going to make customers or consumers fall in love with. You make sure they are so obsessed with, with the product, even when it is the only one which is, which is more selling out. There are actually cases where a, pro, um, 
a product is more known than the than the company producing it and that happens when the brand is too uh, when that product is too good it does not mean that this this company is good in all brands no it is just good in one brand i think this this is more common with uh, with educational institutions it can be universities there are universities we know where like this university produces best doctors and period so only that is going to sell the university so with that the university is also going to attract um students from other courses but then it is more known in this here in uganda we know that uh, we know that makere is good with the uh, with with doctors we know that ucu produces best lawyers these universities have other courses but they're all concentrated on one course maybe you see you said you know what we're going to concentrate with lawyers so the lawyers are going to sell the university which is going to make uh, uh, students people who want to offer other courses as well join the university so that is what, what they mean by product use and application. As a company, you can you can concentrate at least on one product and you put it out there. The next thing is competitors. Sad as it might be, making a better product than your competitors is usually not enough to generate sales. And you can bear me witness. There is always, we, there is always people keep saying, oh, this product is not good, this product is not good, but guess what? People are buying the product, even when the product is not good. But there is that one person who has better products, but the person is not getting customers or consumers to, you know, to, 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 for, for the company to get the sales they need. Your customer needs to believe you are a better choice. Most actually, in most cases, I tell people, we really do not buy the product but we buy the referrals we buy the success stories you you can bear me witness um especially ladies they always keep asking themselves oh which lotion are you using which product are you using and they do not even care whether that what this person's skin will be the same as their skin but because this person is looking good they're like tell me what you're using um i i really need to try it out what does that mean? The person is buying the success story. It's not about whether the product is good or not. So that's why the customers need to believe you are a better choice. So in the competitive market, you can also position your product as a better alternative to a significant competitor by highlighting how different, how different your product is and why it should be your customer's first choice. If, um, if it is things to do with Cosmetics, it can be like um, when you buy this product, the scars, um, you won't have scars, you won't have the black spots. Maybe you won't have the, uh, how are they called? How are they called? I'm forgetting the name. You, you, you just mentioned something that this product is going to remove this. And after mentioning it, just have a few success stories, real success stories. And guess what? You're going to get yourself customers. That's why um, we are saying here, it does not matter whether your product is the best. If it is not out there, you won't get the clients because no one will know. The next step is framework for effective product positioning. You can't nail product positioning in one go and then forget about it. Product positioning is an ongoing and evolving process that needs to adapt in, in response to changes in your industry and your customers' needs. With this, I usually mention it with uh, people who use social media. Since we are, go we are getting into, into the festival season, you're going to bear me witness, people are going to advertise. People are going to put a lot of money into advertisement because it's Christmas season. And by January, boom all the companies will keep quiet so what happens is there are people you had started catching their eye 
And from the blue, you are back to zero. You are quiet. They're going to forget you. So if you want to repeat the same process next December, you're going to be starting from zero. So that's why it's important consistency. Keep, you know, keep positioning yourself. I do not know any brand which advertise more than Coca-Cola. Even when you would think that Coca-Cola has made it is all over the place. They keep doing these things. They keep advertising now and then, you know, and their the, and their ads are really good. So it is the same thing. Just because you got clients, it does not mean relax. No, keep doing this. Keep doing this. Keep advertising. Um, the next, the next thing. Let's go to the next slide. Let's go to the next slide. What, what do we follow when you're positioning your product online? So when you're going to, to, to put your product online, you might need to ask yourselves these different questions. What is your ideal customer? Not in terms of budget, but in terms of, of values. Your customers, where are they? You realize that there are some products where the customers, maybe with their values or words, maybe they do not use Facebook and your clients, according to the, to the product, maybe they're on Snapchat. So get to know where your customers belong. What are, what are your personal values and how do these relate with your product or company? As, um, as, a, as a company owner, you have, uh, you, you have to make sure your products in one way or the other, they relate with your personal values. With that, it will be so simple for you, first of all, to use your products, because it is very funny for you as a producer not to use your product because maybe you have different values. No, produce what you can use. And it can be so easy for you to market your, your products, like to leave your products when they are in the same, when they relate with your values. The next thing is, what do, I con um, what do you consider your company's core co competencies and how can you make the, them visible? This is what I have mentioned. There are companies which are, which are producing a number of products, but we only know them because of one product. And it is because they realize their competency is in this product. So they put the product out there. However much they have other products, but they focus on advertising more, this one product because they realize customers love it more. So I think here um, it is important to actually concentrate more on your strengths. Not this thing of, I have strength here, so I'm going to concentrate on my weaknesses. No, concentrate, um, concentrate in, your, in your strength. Another thing, uh, what brands do you like and how would, would people associate your company with these brands? Yeah, it, it comes back to when you're choosing brand ambassadors. Um, you don't just choose a brand ambassador because you like this celebrity or you like, no, it's not that way. However, you like the celebrity, but does this celebrity match with your company or with this product? Do you think they're going to, to attract people to have this product because it goes beyond the numbers? Um, what are the current trends in the market and what can your product contribute to that? That's very important. As a company, um, uh, you have to keep evolving, evolving by the trends. Well, what people were buying in 2017 is not what they are buying now. What people were buying in 2020 is not what they are buying now. So follow the trends. This calls for flexibility. And when you're, when you're following the trends, this does not mean that your quality is supposed to go low. No, keep the quality, but change something here and there. Deal with the, with the characteristics so that they match. They match with the trends. They match with the trends. Let's go to the next slide, which is the last one. 
the, the most very important thing to note when you are planning to, to, to go digital, the company name. Um, if you are starting and maybe you are still thinking about the names, let your company name be as short as possible. If, um, if you, it can only be two names, better. Or if, it, if, if it's going to be so long, then make sure it's short, the, the, the short name. It's, it's so precise that people can easily capture it. Then focus on your products. We already talked about it. It's not only about the numbers, also focus on the quality of the product. Know your target market know your target market. And with this, it even helps you when you are advertising, maybe on Facebook, because Facebook is going to ask you your target market, the age. So you must be knowing what you're going to choose. Not, you know, not, not choosing something different. Maybe if, if, if you are selling outfits, you can easily uh, put between what? Between 18 years, maybe to 40 um, or to 35 know your target market but if you're selling construction material and you and your target market you include people of 18 18 years come on very few people of that age are thinking of building so that's why it's important to know your target market needs of your target market yes after knowing them what do they need what do they need um, people of, of 20 years in their early 20s what are they looking at? Maybe they're looking at looking good. Um, you know, so know what they need. Uh, distinctiveness of your company. We should stop copying and pasting because, because there is a, the, um, a bigger brand. You try to copy literally from the name, the brand colors. You won't sell yourself. Be different, be different. Establish a point of differentiation. That's what I was mentioning. Be different. It can be with colors that we would know. Like we know that when we see uh, when we see yellow, that's MTN. That's what we are seeing. Maybe when we see red, that is Airtel. So have something which makes you unique. Create thought-provoking website content. Yeah, do not always just feed feed your followers. Um, create engaging content. That's why um, here we mentioned provoking something which will get them out of their their comfort zone. It can be a question or it can be a statement which is going to attract them to comment or say something. Uh, know where your target audience is. Yeah, know where they are. Know that this product is maybe people using using this different different platforms. Maybe these people are most likely to be on Twitter. So go the other side. Uh, share valuable content. Um, as even when you're selling your product, learn also how to give people content in not specifically for your product, but some other thing relatable, some other thing relatable, which can be of help. So maybe you, you are selling, um, let me say, let me say what, maybe, maybe you, 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 are, you are selling utensils. It does not harm when you also give people content of how to cook a few, um, a few dishes because it can easily go hand in hand. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. My presentation has come to an end. I do not know whether we have questions yet. Um, I would answer them, but I'm checking in the chat and I do not see any question yet. Yeah, thank you so much, Linda. Thank you so much. Hope this, uh, this was helpful. Yeah, let's keep learning together. Thank you so much. Well, thank, thank you so you much. Too. Thank you so much, um, Claudine Mutoni, for such a wonderful presentation. I had like Madam Linda had something to say, right? 
Um, I was just saying thank you to her as well. Um, yeah, there are some people who are curious to know if the slides will be sent or can be shared with them. Um, so they want to know whether our presentation can be shared, right? Yes, yes, yes. That's very okay. And we just left that question for you because we hope you reserve the rights yeah. to share them or not. Yeah, with your approval yeah. as well, because um, you came up with the content and yeah, we also want you to be aware of that. So if it's fine with you, then we will go ahead and do that. Thank you. That's very okay. Uh, I was saying I wanted to, to, to uh, I was thanking Claudine for bringing us such a wonderful presentation on how to better position yourself in the digital market. You see, things with, with marketing, you have to understand that there must be what we call a positioning. And we, this way in brand management, we emphasize the point of brand positioning. Positioning in time, positioning on the side of the customers, positioning in the region, Everywhere they, there is a need of how to position yourself well and better. For that case, I want to think that all our participants are now well versed with the right way of positioning their soul. Um, I would like to request now our brother Nicholas Kato to come over, to come over. As he comes over, uh, allow me to tell you this, that uh, if there is, um, there is anyone with a question, you can please raise, the, raise it in the comment section. And if you want to speak, uh, you will please wait when we are done with the presentation. You're going to have that moment. It will be around 10 minutes before the end of our session. So we'll give you that chance to speak anything you want to tell us. Uh, so uh, now I would like to, to invite a brother, Nicholas, to come over and present what we think understands most. And that is none other than the graphics, especially in the digital world. And when you talk of graphics, definitely you're talking of how to impress the other client to buy what you have for him or her. So brother Nicholas, please come over and talk to these people. They want to listen to you. They want to learn from you. And um, hopefully that they will get a point. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you very much. Like my colleague that, uh, that has been presenting earlier, he has talked about how to position yourself in the digital area, but the positioning yourself on the digital market, first of all, you are supposed to be taking in mind that you are supposed to be the best graphics to pull or to attract customers on your site or on your pages. Second, good graphics that don't come there, they don't come there, but comes also with Photos aside. So in my discussion, I'm going to be talking how we are going to be playing around with graphics and photography as well. So that's my presentation. Last time we're talking about digital marketing, where we saw dealing with email marketing and other social media platforms that we discussed. So you can go to the next slide. Yes. So what is graphics designing? First of all, to understand graphics designing, it's all about ideas that are communicating or messages that you put out there in a visual way. It can be used by any type of industry or to convey complicated information. So if you find your information complicated, you can display that information by just the use of graphics. So people in this area, people are being visual or 
they are going to an area of audiovisual ideas. So people will get appealed more with ideas that are visual than words. So imagine someone is having a blog, is writing an article on the blog, bloggers or someone is having a website, but a website is bare. However much of good information on your site, but without that information, cannot be well appealing to your, to your clients. So that's basically what we are doing about graphic designing. So even when my the previous speaker has been talking about positioning yourself, positioning yourself is all about getting that content. How are you positioning yourself? How are you going to position yourself with the graphics on your site, on your Facebook, on your Instagram, on your Twitter? So graphic design is just the craft of creating visual content to communicate messages. You have the message, but how are you going to put it out there for the clients? To understand what your product is about, you may not be able to write a lot about your product, but just putting out there your coffee, your your product that you're selling on the market, just by putting that photo. That's where photography comes in. By just putting that photo, really communicating over what you're selling. Even someone that cannot listen to you, someone who can't hear. A deaf person can easily understand what you're selling. So, in the next slide. So, how essential is market dig how essential is graphic design into the digital marketing? First of all, it builds your own unique identity. Like like my first speaker was saying, you're supposed to bring that uniqueness to the market. What defines you as a, as a company? What do, makes you outstanding from other companies? It's all about the graphics and the color that you choose for your graphics. She was saying about MTN, Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola is defined by red and black, MTN yellow, and other people have, have decided to get that unique color for their company. So there should be consistency in, why, in your graphics. Imagine start finding the page, this time there are flowers in, that are in blue, the next time they are in orange, the next time they are in yellow. So the client cannot really identify you with a certain color with a certain brand. So graphics helps you to build a certain brand for your company. Build, build that consistency and uniqueness that provides a unique. Even the logo, when you are talking about graphics design, you also talk about the logos. Like as you can see the image in that slide, flyers, newsletters, banners, and logo designs, brochures, but that brochure can, should be in a particular color that can define your company. So a logo can be as simple as it is, but if it's consistent, and let me take an instance, someone has a logo in blue, and the graph flyers are getting to bring, put out the yellow, red, and green. So in my in my experience as a graphics designer, I believe a logo defines like a school. A school has a badge, and the color of that badge defines the colors the uniform should be having. So a logo is a badge of a company. So your, if your client, you have said it, your logo is in green, then that be a brand color. So someone is going to identify you with a particular color. Graphic designs can convey message better than what, like I was saying. In case I put out my good graphics, I may not need to speak a lot. Especially that's the power of PowerPoint presentation. When I put out my PowerPoint presentation, I will not need to use a lot of words because people can see what I'm doing about the graphics and everything that entails in that slide. Basically, you improve sales. If someone's attracted to your page, is going to find out what are you talking about because you have the best. You have the best graphics, and that's so you're improving the sales of your company. You're delivering the brand message. Your brand message this is the brand message. So you're putting out flyers on special days for your clients. Like my, my colleague was talking about Christmas. I'm going to put out flyers for Christmas. So you're going, you will not need to put like a subset as the word we use for our marketing. You may not choose a lot of captions. Twitter limits the words that I want to use, but what helps you to limit? If Twitter is limiting the words you are using, if Twitter is limiting the words that you're using, so what, what else are you going to use? You're going to use the graphics because you are limited with the words you're supposed to use. So you have an option of only 
putting out the perfect graphics. So, next, seven basic principles of graphics design. So, first of all, your, your content should be balanced. First of all, it should be balanced. They're supposed to be balancing images and the graphics and the words. You, you're not supposed to fill your entire graphics. You're not supposed to fill your... Sure. You're not supposed to feed your entire You're supposed to be balancing your graphics that you can balance photos and images all the words so it should be basically balanced so i like it i like it. we talk about that sequence on your flyer that from the top i'm seeing the heading then the image somewhere then the logo is down all your social media platforms i don't expect social media platforms to be in the middle of the flyer so that should be that i like it of all that sequence in your designs that from the heading i'm seeing the illustration then down then alignment, the way you align your flyer, they disorganize. What's the flow for that alignment in your in your work? Then the contrast, that should be a contrast of colors. Someone can choose one color, but it's providing different shades. If I'm using green, 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 I can use different shades of green. You have lemon green, dark green, I'm a green. So I'm using one color, but I'm, use, I'm showing different shades of that color. Then the rhythm, should does the, do the illustration that you're using share rhythm or do, do they share cohesion between what you're selling and what you're putting out? So I don't expect you are dealing with, uh, with coffee and you're, and you're showing something else. So I expect that rhythm that the illustration that you're putting on your flyers, when you're dealing in coffee, I expect you to put someone drinking coffee, a coffee, a coffee cafeteria or anything. But the illustration that you're using on flyers should be also providing reading between what you are, your company is about and what is put on the flyers. Then proximity. Is there that proximity between uh, what you're selling, what your company and what you're putting on the flyers? You are said you're thinking about Yes, you are, you, are, you are a company that is dealing with corporate, the corporate world, but the images you're putting on the flyers, people are dressing indecently. So that should be that proximity between your company and your, your flyers and your brand. Then the color and space. In case you can see the flyers are put on this particular slide, realize the background is white. But preferably, I expect someone to be using flyers that are with the white background. Because with the white background, you can put different colors on that background. And someone is not going to concentrate on the background, but it's concentrating on the content put on that particular background. So preferably use the colors that are not shouting. Use, if it's pink, use some condensed pink. And for the colors you're choosing, in case you're dealing with the product of women, I put, I expect you to put, to use some pink colors that those Girlish colors, the light blue and lemon green. But if it's you're selling something like men suits, let that some that color be a little dark. So the even the colors that you're using for flyers define which audience you want to direct it to. Next slide. Next slide. So with the digital marketing, everything involves uh, what you're dealing with. Basing on the company and on your, on your budget. Last time I was talking about digital marketing and I talked about the, the budget. Know your budget and what, your, what fits in your budget. In case you cannot go for, for the tutorial videos, for the ads, get something that fits in your budget. 
So you have the postcards and flyers. This can be used in online. You have infographics, newsletters for your company. You are sending a, a monthly week newsletter to your clients, annual reports. Like banks, and sponsors, sponsors in case you a, a company in Ghana, all an NGO, all a CBO, you're supposed to create accountability to your funders. So you're going to create an annual report, but an annual report is not all about using Microsoft Word, but put some images, get to Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator and design something for your plans. So someone can be enjoying to read your annual report. Annual report is not all about using Microsoft Word, but make it attractive. I can see the flyers on this. They're just annual report, news reporters, news reporters, but can use news reporters, but uh, news data, but that they have some graphics in them. So they make you feel that love to read that piece. Brochures, they can be both print and digital, email marketing templates, then um, like we were being, in case you received an email from uh, from the organizers of the same, at least they had, there was something attached, an image attached to emails. When are the days where emails are just blank? You not have not attached any image or a template where you have, so you either that email will be with some logos of your company. So it creates that love and that uniqueness in your marketing. PowerPoint presentation, social media ads and banners. You get to a company, it's having a cheetah page, but it's not having a cover to its page. Yes, you have in covers a profile photo or a banner for your Twitter page. So create banners for you, your different social media platforms. Digital advertisement, create a, a, from then from the digital, we have we have the just designs, graphic designs, but you have seen even the visual part where we are seeing digital advertisement. You want to make the video long, six minutes, Some, no one is going to watch that. But you create something one minute that's talking about a lot about your company, animated logos. Because you may find someone being appealed to animations. Create animations, trailers and presentations, promotional videos, promoting your products, tutorial videos, teaching people. Not all about you're not going to be telling, you're selling uh, foods, but you're not providing any recipes like teaching someone how to use that product. Websites. Websites can don't be with a boring website where it's one photo, not moving photos or transitions in your photos. Website, you can even add photos, videos to your website. So don't have the boring video website, sorry. Just add some clips, videos, banners, and GIS. You can even sell, you can send a GIF to your camp, to your clients. Next slide. Next slide. Then go to the next slide. Yes, can I have the next slide? Madam Linda. Hello, Madam Linda. We can wait for him for a moment. Maybe she's off, but she's coming back very soon. Yes, Linda, we can have the next slide. We can wait for him for her for a moment. Maybe she's coming. <clears throat> Yeah, thank you very much. So, like I was saying, graphics designing is not independent from photography. So, however much of you are using the perfect colors, the best shades of colors, like I said. So, imagine like you find such a website, such a website that is on the screen. You are seeing photos. Obvious case, when you find a, a website 
talking about growing your music career, but you need that be enough. You're supposed to have that enticing someone like we are finding different artists on the pages, different photos, very artistic photos. So companies should adopt having photo shoots, product shoots for their work, what they're selling. If you're selling perfumes, if you're selling uh, coffee, if you're selling jewelry, in case it's a modeling agency, get back, have the photo shoots, invest in photo shoots as a company. That in case I put, I'm not supposed to download photos, from Google to use on my flyers. I won't use my personal because someone texts your company to be with that you're not a copycat in any way. So you're supposed to have photo shoots for, for your products that you're going to use for your flyers. So imagine if I set uh, a platform with such photos, it comes enticing for you to, to read more. Next slide. In the next slide, please. So as I'm waiting for the next slide, I think we can proceed. Yes, yes. So it believes that uh, let us have some facts about imagery digital marketing. Articles with relevant images average 94% of them have total views than articles without images. So 94% of image of uh, articles with images are more viewed than articles that images. So he, you can see that um, companies should adopt adding photos and good photos, quality photos, especially the same things, not about having graphics, not about having photos or graphics, but good graphics and good photo. photo. So get out there, yes, you're building your brand. Like we have said, good graphics, brings more so so invest in your marketing strategies get out there get the best photographers on the market even on your budget get good ones with good edits with good creatives because we have photographers who are specialized for a particular niche we have product product photographers we have travel photographers we have wildlife photographers we have outdoor photographers so you look for those perfect photographers for product photography even when it's when you in the newspapers, in the case it's a press release with photos, get they near get 15% more nine views than a text on the press release. So in case you are using a release, you don't tell about uh, even the, the governments themselves, even if it's uh, a police, anyone for any reason, in case you're not selling a product, you are selling a service, you are advertising something in the market or putting out anything on your platform, use photos. 60% of consumers who use online research say that they prefer to contact a business with whose listing includes an image. That takes back to WhatsApp businesses, which is one way a business tool for marketing. You put a photo, you put even, you put what you're selling. So someone can see the product that you're selling because of the good photos there. Near and near seven percent of e-commerce website shoppers say the product image is very important when making their purchase decision. So imagine you're selling a bag, but you're just saying a bag costs fifty thousand or fifty nine dollars. So, but you have not put the product that you're selling. So someone may say you're not authentic or you're not credible enough. Or you're not even reliable. So you may be pushed to speak to skip your product to another website that is having the price, a description, product description, and the image itself. So the last slide.
So as I conclude, why is photography important for digital marketing? The aim of advertising and marketing is to sell your products and services. That's what we are talking about, positioning your product or service. If it's your, it's your aim of advertising and marketing, that will imply that all kinds of businesses can also, for education establishments and charities, can use photographs. Like I was saying, it's not about just selling a product, but you are school. You are you're marketing something. You are no hospital. Put out the good photographs for your, for your flyers. But why should you put photography on an enemy? Like we have, we have seen, we can sit down there. We are seeing a child with breathing love. That sunlight, the child is there with that sunlight, that morning sunrise photo. You are seeing that there is beauty. There is faith and love and hope. That's because that's what the supply is doing about. We are seeing the menu in Mexicano. They have attached the food, the plate of food, and you can say they're serving good food. So they catch the eye of the prospective banner. People saying in selling pizza, they put the perfect pizzas and their different products. So even on the menus, the menus that you find in cafeterias, cafes, then lunches, then uh, restaurants, they have photos on the menus because you can you can see what you're going to see. And someone can buy food, however much you don't know the food, but you have seen the photo and you can be attracted and you become a prospective customer. They hope to make the most complicated of concepts simple. In case you cannot explain something, just put the photo, take the photo, see, show the client, this is what we deal in, and this is what involve. You are showing a video, you capture how you are selling, a, in case you are selling a, a tractor, show how your the client can use this tractor and everything, just in one video. And you're not going to use a lot of what to explain to the client. And you can use them to enhance and visualize the product or services appeared. Someone, in case someone sees a photo, you can get a physical image of what you're selling. So you can imagine you as him or herself using this particular product because you have created a video for her and she can visualize what you are what really you are talking about. Lastly, you can use them to pull together your ideas. You have a lot of, you have a lot of ideas, but you cannot write them in a in a entire novel, entire book, but you can create ideas. Maybe I have five concepts. I can put different images of the particular image. Let me say I'm a, I'm a fashion store. I want to put an image of shirts, women clothes, jewelry. Caps, so I'm having five images on one flyer. So someone can identify. So I will not need to write a lot about my product. So basically, digital marketing, you cannot think about digital marketing without thinking about photography and graphics. So because this is what we put out on our different pages and on our different digital marketing tools. Thank you very much. I think I can call, it, I can call it my colleague to pick it from there. Yes. Oh, wow. I'd like to thank you so much, Brother Nicholas Cato, for giving us such a wonderful presentation over uh, the graphics and also photography. And basically emphasizing the point of how to write, how to position yourself rightly in the digital market. You see, when we were discussing our presentations yesterday with this team, uh, a colleague just raised the point and said that, that the Bible usually stresses the point of your position will be your possession. Let me restate it. Your position will finally be your position. And if we bring it right here on the digital market, definitely it is very true that how you position, how you position yourself is how you will be. And that is only what you will get because people will only perceive you on how you position yourself. 
they will understand your product on what you tell them about it and how you tell it to them. So that's why we are putting more emphasis on how to better position yourself in the digital market. We know you know it and we understand that at least everyone here has a hint on it. But I want to thank you so much, Brother Kato, for stressing your point of the graphics and also photography because most people are using those, they are downloading photos and using them everywhere. And you see it is killing most of people's intentional impressions, especially those people that are well versed with the internet. You're using a photo, a client has just seen it somewhere on another website and also using it in your flyer or certain website. So that means that you lack, you, you lack, uh, there is something you lack in your brand and definitely you might end up losing that client. Um, at this particular moment, I will just come up uh, to try to summarize exactly what my colleagues were trying to talk about. And also to prepare you for the questions and answer session that I think you people might be having certain questions that you need to be answered and maybe you have other submissions to put across. Uh, Madam Linda. Yes, Julius. Yes. Uh, did you receive my, my, my presentation? But as you share it, meanwhile, I can be sharing my... People wanted to see me and... <laughs> So, okay. so this is the Julius you are you hearing here. But, um, yeah, I think you can just address um, a question in the chat. I think there was a question asked by Nana Yao. He said, um, practically, would you say Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok are good digital marketing? Sorry? So he wants to know if Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok are good digital marketing sites. Oh, I saw that question somewhere. Someone raised it. Um, ah, she's Madam Nana Yao. It's Yao Adani. Um, definitely, if you mention anything concerning the name or holding the name a social media platform, definitely we shall just say that that is a right platform to use for marketing. Uh, why would I say that Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok are also good digital marketing sites? That is by statistics. When we started earlier, we are trying to mention how statistically, how Facebook and Instagram and also uh, TikTok, how they are lined as one of, of the platforms that have most uh, participants, like they have a lot of um, people on them. There's a very big number on Facebook, and if not, it might, be, it might be the leading social media platform now with a bigger number of people. And you can talk of Instagram is also good for a specific purpose. Our, my colleague earlier said that that is specifically for advertising business, especially those in leisure, leisure businesses, the accommodations and other business that are related to such. Uh, TikTok is now for videos and it has uh, took also lead, especially during this COVID pandemic. People uh, were stressed and that gave rise to TikTok. So we're trying to advise that we can take use of, can make use of these platforms. Why? Because where there is people, I told you earlier, where there is people, there is money. And we, when you see a team of 10 or more people, that means that there is some money for you there. So just tap into it and use it. Without neglecting any social media platform, we could advise that these are practically very good marketing sites. 
Hope I answered her, Madam Linda. If so, um, I hope your question has been addressed. Okay. Oh, thank you so much. <clears throat> so I, I want to just talk about a small thing here. Uh, yes, we've had everything about the digital marketing and we've had it all. I want to believe that we have had it all. We've given you what you've had. So uh, I thought of sharing with you uh, what digital marketing is and what it is not. But I'd like to start with what digital marketing is not. Because from the start, we've been telling you what digital marketing is, how you can benefit from it, and why you need it. So at this particular moment, allow me to tell you what digital marketing is briefly as we head to the end of our presentation. Yes, Madam Linda, to the next slide. Oh. Um, maybe it was a bit tempered with, but I'll just go straight to it. Um, you, you see these days, technology has changed uh, the way consumers approach brands and businesses, and also our products and how they approach our products and services. Uh, the other traditional marketing doesn't even achieve the results it used to do. Just a few years ago, uh, you can remember that traditional marketing was leading and was doing everything, but now it doesn't. So when digital, digital media arrived, that is when even a new area of specialization arrived as well. And that is what people call or what we are calling digital marketing. Uh, it is even the current topic, and yet we believe that it is little known about it. So, though even some people misunderstand the idea of digital marketing. So, for, for that reason, uh, I would like to, to bring out the misconceptions or how people have uh, misunderstood digital marketing and maybe how some of us, I mean the participants in this session, might be misunderstanding the, the idea of digital marketing. Don't be offended if I say that you've, mis or you've misunderstood it. Why? Because even it is a new thing in our lives, it is very new. So misconception is inevitable. So this is what digital marketing is not. Uh, the, the digital marketing is not traditional marketing. You see, we were used to carry out a set of strategies for different segments and then offer everyone the same kind of products or services. But digital marketing, on the other hand, tries to offer different services and products in a personalized way. Uh, and that's according to our customers' times and needs. Now, for example, if a company that sells books carried out traditional marketing strategy, to offer a catalog of different books to all of its clients, so that each one of them would choose the one they liked best. So they would send this catalog every week, two weeks, or even once a month, making the person feel overwhelmed by their insistence. And I know most of you people here have heard that. You insist on sending someone a certain message, maybe you're trying to push your product, 
and someone is not buying it. But since you have a chance of reaching him without even having that physical contact with the person, it is easier. You're sending a message over WhatsApp or over you posting something about something every day on your Instagram or your Facebook or your Twitter or your, everyone your blogs. As people will be reading these things day by day, they will start being influenced. Like they will, they will be moved to become your customers. So how would this work with the digital marketing strategy? The client would buy a book and an email would be sent to him and after uh, the, the purchase was done, or by the time the book could have been read. So this email would offer similar books for him to consider. I'm trying to give an instance. And by doing so, the customer will be happy once he's finished his book and maybe is about to finish it, he can choose another one that matches his interests. You understand? So it's obvious that this way of doing things will be more interesting to him or her, and maybe he won't feel harassed. But if it was a traditional way of marketing, reaching to people every time, people have fixed schedules, but now you're just approaching someone digitally, not reaching her, you need, you're not reaching that person physically, but you're approaching the, first, the person virtual or digitally. Uh, that's why we are saying that this is, it is not a digital way of doing things. So if you come with your digital, uh, your, your local or your, your traditional marketing skills and bring them to the digital world, you might find certain challenges. Another, another point is, uh, it is not having social networks. What do I mean if I say social networks? Uh, what do I mean if I say social networks? Like having social networks for your company and someone taking care of them is very easy. Uh, even a child could be constantly uploading and sharing information every day. In contrast, uh, digital marketing uses social, social networks with a clear and effective uh, purpose. The idea is to know more about each of your clients. You see, there is no doubt that social networks such as Facebook show that day-to-day -day activities, desires, tests, and, and even feelings of people. But as never before, uh, companies can meet their customers in real life. You see, I can sit here and even meet with a person in Ghana, with a person in Nigeria, with a person in South Africa, just by sitting there and interacting with that client. And maybe that person is even very big that to approach that person physically, you need appointments and so on. But then I can utilize the, 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 the digital platforms and approach that person just by passing, by passing all the, the uh, the criteria or the procedures of meeting that person. And that makes good sense for we as young people. Why? You very much know that young people have less social networks. Usually young people have less social networks. And if we tend to have, maybe we have those friends of our fathers, have friends of our friends, we have, friend, we have our lecturers or teachers, uh, we have our family members and their friends. So uh, we don't have two big social networks that we can utilize to run, to run our businesses or to support us. But then if you tap into this, uh, that's where digital marketing breaks that, uh, that obstacle of social networks. So it is sent about social networks. Don't just text the one you know. You can text even the one you don't know. You can, your message, your product can reach someone even you don't, you're not even connected to just by posting it online or by just uh, texting a message in a, in a group, say uh, Telegram, say on, on WhatsApp and any other uh, platform. Number three is, uh, 
It is not web design only. You see, my friend was talking about this and wanted to explain more. Uh, digital marketing is not all about designing your web, your website and like, it is wow. Yes, that is very good. But you need to go the extra mile and also connect your website to your uh, social media channels so that you attract more traffic on the website. You, are, you realize that when these people are organizing this conference, they try to reach out to all the social medias. Personally, I found them on social medias, but then I went to, to, to I visited their site. So you see, without the social medias, maybe I couldn't know about this conference. So what are we saying? That as you, are, as you have a business and maybe you have heard it that websites are good for your business, you have to adapt other social media platforms. You see, it costs even nothing to, to, to be on those social medias. Um, it is having social media accounts only. It isn't having social media. It is not having social media accounts only. Why? When you're in social medias and you, have, you don't have a website, so people need to know more information about you. And you know these things of social medias, there are a lot of uh, identity theft. And why do we talk about identity theft? People are stealing your identity. Other people are using your name before you know it. You have a business named XXX Company Limited, but there is also another company called XX Company Limited with the very name that you're using. So that makes it easier for people to fear approaching you, thinking might, you might be fraudulent or might be, they fear to expose the information or their need to your product. But if it is a website, then they will be sure. But make sure that as, a, as your prospect is moving from platforms to platforms, to platform to other platforms, will be finding your business or your product. Now, if it goes to Twitter, if he's on the website, if he's on YouTube, at least there will be something like Elegant Brands Uganda on YouTube. There'll be something like Elegant Brands on Twitter. There'll be something like Elegant Brands on Google as, as a server for websites and so on. So, uh, and I think that the digital, digital marketing is not, is it is not emailing every prospect. You see, this is so challenging. When people hear that digital marketing, there is a lot of people, they will start going on texting everybody they are seeing. Everybody they found online, they just text him or her, that please I have this product. That is very good and okay, but that's not a winning strategy. A winning strategy in a digital market for those people that have been in this conference, you need to understand that you can support the people you need. Say you have, you need men, you can say that now I'm doing this ad or this promotion, but this will be for men. I need men in the age of 25 to 35 years. You'll exclude the other age because maybe they're not your potential clients. Maybe your potential clients are old people. You understand? Maybe um, your, your, your prospects, your, your, your potential clients are only well to do people your products are very expensive and they are mostly for rich people. Target that people and what does the digital market provide us? It provides us with statistics. It provides us with analytics that we can use to better send or to better position our message or send them to the right people. So another thing that the digital, or the digital world or the digital marketing is not is it is not having a blog alone. Yes, you might have a blog and yes, you, you, it is bringing very big results. But what if you add on social medias? What if you add on the other platforms and like you start mailing even, you start mails and doing other things on a daily basis. I'm very sure you'll have more results than before. And I think that the, digital market is not. It is not being online and posting every time. That's also challenging. So your, your prospects are everywhere seeing. You see, I've been online for several times. 
they are surfing on internet. But there's something I've realized that I want you people to know, that there are a lot of people that don't even want, or they're not interested even in doing a small impression on your post. They visit your, 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 your website, they visit your social media channel, they don't like it, they don't follow it, they don't like any post, they don't comment on any post, but they are following your product, they are following your service, they are following your personal handle or your personal uh, account. And those people, they are promising and they are your prospects. So I have to be very vigilant. How to be very wise. My colleague talked about that in the, uh, in the first session, that when you're posting, you have to be very careful. There's those people that aren't even commenting, but they're waiting for you, maybe to mess up and they come over to criticize you. Oh, they're just waiting for the right time to come and tell you, please, I've been following you for this time and now I want you to do this. Personally, in a, just some two months back, uh, I got a, a message in my DM from a certain fellow from a country called Zimbabwe. Hope you all people know Zimbabwe. Uh, this person came to my DM and told me, hey, Julius, I've been following you for close to five months. And what I've realized, you must be an expert in networker, like the issues of networking. So I want you to come and teach my fellow youth in Zimbabwe. We have a team of young entrepreneurs that I want you to teach the importance of networking, especially for young people. But my point here is one, the guy told me that he had been following me for close to five months. When I tried to check, that is a guy that had not even liked any, had not even retweeted any of my tweets, had not even did something like following me, but he was just following me every day, he could just try to make sure that he's watching what I'm tweeting. And yes, he was following me closely. And when the time came, he came and told me, you man, I've been following you for this time. And this is all I want you to do. I'm very sure you also have those instances where people have came to you and like, you're wondering how, how comes this person has been following you for all along? Why? We have to be very vigilant with what we are posting and like when we're online, what are we doing? And when you're online, what I do when you're online, you can just try to surf and see your competitors, what they are doing, how they are better than you. You learn and relearn. Not posting every time and doing this, be wise of what you're putting across because it is open to the whole world. That is a challenge, a good thing, but also a challenge with the, with the digital market. It is very big. People can access your, your, your information at any time. And before you know it, you will think that you can maybe delete if you have made a mess. But these days, we have had those applications where I, someone will just make a tweet and there is an application that will make a screenshot. And even if you delete it in just two seconds, the other guy's phones and application will have made screenshots for your tweets. So you can't hide anywhere. That's why I'm saying that you should be very vigilant. When you're online, it's not, don't be burdened, but like, I'm not posting every time. Will my product sell? No, just calm down. Be there. Look your competitors. Engage in other posts. Do everything online. If it is mentioning your friends, if it is supporting other businesses, do it. Not uh, having headache of posting or not posting every time. Um, can we please move ahead? Oh, sorry, I will go with it. I think it was, uh, I'm sorry for the, for the presentation. Maybe it was tampered by, it was a, a, an error as we're trying to share it to, to our colleagues. So uh, I was trying to tell you exactly what 
digital marketing is and what it is not. For what it is, I'm very sure that's what we've talked about. And I want to think that each one of you people has gotten a point in the digital market and how you can better leverage yourself, how you can better leverage your business into the digital market. So all we've been learning through our sessions, we've been trying to answer these questions because that's what we ask ourselves when we're trying to prepare for this session. We ask ourselves these questions and they are, that, those are what we've been answering all along. Why am I bringing them at the end of my session? It is because if there is any question that you didn't understand well, or maybe you missed, we can devise means of making you understand it well, maybe during this session or even after. So one of the questions we've been tackling, it has been what is digital marketing? I'm hopeful that you people have understood what digital marketing is. And here I've been even telling you what it is not. Uh, uh, another question we've been tackling has been, what are the four types of digital marketing? They are beyond four, but we've been focusing ourselves on the four. And I'm hopeful that you people have gotten it. Should we mention the examples of digital marketing? I hope you mentioned them all. Uh, should we say why your company needs digital marketing? Do you still have that question? I hope we answered it. The benefits of digital marketing, we are very sure that now you are very vast with those benefits. And you know you will tap into them starting or immediately after this session. Um, the best digital marketing strategies, those are what my friends have been talking about this very evening. And that's all I came with, emphasizing that you please, they are the best digital marketing strategies, but we know you have yours and we can even add on ours, but there is something you need to understand, which is as you're trying to put them across, make sure you position them well. Mind about the position because that is what will be your position. Uh, like we've told you how to do digital marketing. And we told you that even by attending this conference, you've been already in digital marketing. If you've not been a, a, a client for someone, you've been, a, 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 you've been uh, the business man or woman. You've been the, 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 the producer. Why? Because you are targeted now. Zoom is earning something from this conference, the very platform you are using. So before you know it, you're already client to someone, you're already serving, you're, you're already working, you're making money for someone. So what, how is it if you also make money for yourself? Because these things are open for us, they are free for us, and we can tap into them. I want to urge you very good people, my, my good people or our good participants, that please, when the digital marketing is open to you, if you have any phone, if you have anything like a laptop, if you have anything like a friend, maybe, or you have a partner who is helping you run your social medias, kindly emphasize the point of leveraging and kindly go an extra mile in digital marketing. Don't use one tool. Digital marketing has a vast, a vast leg of tools like you can choose anything you want. But for your business, try to better understand what you need and how it suits your potential clients. And in marketing, usually I tell you, that is exactly what other people need. Uh, can we go to a... Oh. Mm. Uh, these are the questions that maybe we've been also answering, what does digital marketing do? 
what type of content is better for each stage of the buyer's journey. I want to think that you're well versed with that now. Digital marketing examples, next. Oh, okay, okay. So uh, now um, that's all we, we wanted to talk to you. Uh, we are very happy that you people have been here and uh, we are sending you warm greetings from Uganda, the part of Africa. Uh, my colleagues are very happy to be part of this conference. We know and we are sure it is ending today. We want to thank whoever has been part of it.